All right, let's get into the very first episode of WCW Monday Nitro already. ever. I'm already fired up here, James. I'm coughing. I can't stand my excitement. I'm so this. nitroed right now. I'm nitroed out of my mind. The <laughs> nitroites are here. The pasta maniacs are also here. <laughs> this so is sick. crazy. I thought that we had watched this already. I thought we had reviewed this already. Deb even said, did we already fucking do this? I said, I don't think so. I okay. feel the same way. I think it's because I, I think the time where I really kind of realized where I was feeling deja vu was the main event. I was like, I feel like I've yeah. seen this somewhere. And I think it's not. because they've ran this match 500,000 times <laughs> in a steel yeah. cage, in a singles, yeah. in a lumberjack. Yeah, 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 Different yeah. names, too. Bunch yeah. of fucking Just arenas. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> but this is the first ever episode of WCW Nitro. Uh, like, middle of the year, almost end of the year. It's September 4th, 1995. For some reason, I don't know. I just assumed it started, like, way earlier in the year and not here. But uh, Mall of America as well in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah, so the way that they were doing it before was one hour television also. Um, I, be I believe it was syndicated before. Um, okay. But the way that it was, it was like four matches usually. Nitro yeah. added in a little more theatrics to it. It was a pretty yeah. straightforward mm -hmm. for like Southern product before before right. it became Nitro. Right. Um, but they, they kept the, they kept very much kept the same thing where it was like the matches matter the most. Where like everything yeah, on the show is the the matches are what really you need to be paying attention to. Did, yeah, um. Yeah. So I, this was at the Mall of America. Do you think this is like you just come to the mall and you can watch this? They had like seats and all too. Was it, like I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely. Went, I don't. I don't know. I don't actually know if it was paid or not. I do yeah. know that there was people walking around the mall that were not watching this show. They were escalating. <laughs> that was such a cool shot. <laughs> that I, I, it, all night, all night. I feel like it was always someone in jeans too. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. So um, they they play this B roll shot. You guys have probably seen it in the Nitro DVDs or anything yeah, yeah, way yeah, back yeah. in the day. But they show this arena and they pull back up. It's like they got like a jib that can pull back, and you can see people going up the escalators to the second and third floors, and like people watching from the balcony too. It's just a really cool shot. It's a, I didn't even realize this. The first episode of Nitro wasn't aired on schedule. I didn't even realize that. Is that uh, right? The first episode of Nitro was scheduled to air at a different time than Raw. Luckily for WCW, one week Raw failed to make the weekly television on time. Therefore, the Broadcasting Corporation of U.S. Uh, decided to replace Raw with the first ever edition of Nitro that week. Wow. Uh, surprisingly, it turned <laughs> out to be a huge, huge success for the show. Uh, since if they had broadcasted their first Nitro on a different timing, then they wouldn't have generated a large amount of the audience that they did on Raw's replacement night. Uh, this unscheduled debut of the show did wonders for the company, which eventually started the ratings war. Uh, let's see. There was something else here. Uh, Hogan didn't want to work someone other than Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can go to hell. <laughs> uh, there, uh, also, uh, Nitro, was, uh, Nitro was expanded to two hours following the 96 NBA playoffs. Um, okay. Okay. Because it's, it's, it's less than a year later. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in 96. So Nitro yeah. doesn't stay one hour for super long. Uh, Raw was not extended to two hours until February of 97. Wow. So they were kind of leading for a minute then. I'm. You think the two hour thing? Pro I imagine that helped with the ratings a ton then, right? Yeah. Just having an unopposed hour. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, also, yeah. of course, Nitro was live. So yeah, that's true. I don't even know when Raw went live for the first time, but... Uh, they were getting their ass Fuck smacked. You. <laughs> <laughs> January Don't '98, <laughs> uh, Nitro went to three hours, and that's when it died. <laughs> True. Three hour wrestling shows is God, too dude. much, man. It's just too much. Really? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's crazy because we were looking at it. And we were like, oh, maybe we don't want to do too many episodes that are like three hours because, you know, they're three hour wrestling shows are just whatever yeah. sometimes. Um, and it's like, wow, there really isn't. There's like a year maybe where they're like not three hours long. And then all mm -hmm. the other WCW Nitros are three hours long. That's fucking too much, man. That's crazy, I mean, man. I, I don't mean, I, I guess when I was watching, I mean, because a lot of that must have been during the time I was watching then, like flipping back and forth between Nitro. And I'll be honest with you, I don't even know if I knew that Nitro was on that extra hour. <laughs> I, I don't feel think like most I, people knew. I tuned in at 9 p.m. for Raw, and I was like, okay, Nitro is on as well, and I'll flip back and forth. I don't know if I ever even watched that first hour of Nitro. Really? Because they ran that yeah. right before, right? They always ran yeah, yeah, it was like eight to, 8 to 11, right? And Raw yeah, because I always remember tuning in early, and then, because it, it wouldn't be overkill, because you're watching one show three hours, but then like I'd be flipping channels back and forth, so it didn't even seem like that big of a deal yeah, that it was three yeah. hours long at the time. Yeah, uh, the crazy. first Monday Nitro got a 2.5 rating. 
Okay. Um, and then of course it just has a bunch of other noticeable episodes. Uh, they pulled a six on uh, one episode where Lex Luger and Sting fought Hulk Hogan and Bret Hart in the main event. Oh, um, highest okay. rated that's episode with Bret Hart in the main. Right? Not surprised, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying Never mind. That's a long time. After that. Crazy. Yeah. No, that's '98. So that's a, yeah, that's a while say. later. Um, but I mean, Nitro has a pretty. Uh, you, I, I've watched a bunch of Kevin Nash like uh, shoot interviews before. Sure. You know, he had the book towards the end of WCW for a while, and uh, I remember him saying, "It's like, man." I don't, I don't want to fucking write three hours of TV. And then, you know, you have to write three hours of TV and, and then, then also Thunder, Thunder and then yeah. also Saturday and night. Saturday and, night. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And all that shit. And it's like, you damn, dude. Mike like, what to go say on Worldwide or whatever the fuck that was going oh, on. <laughs> and it had to like <laughs> mechanically make sense, like in a linear format. And he's like, it's just fucking impossible. That's right. Because Thunder was always taped. So they had to do three hour live Nitro and then ha already have Thunder figured out for like the week after too. Right? Yeah. And it had yeah, to but then make they, sense. Then they, yeah. they were like losing money too on Thunder. So they started like taping Thunders in batches. So then they couldn't have like storylines. So it was like really oh, fucked up on Thunder. that's right. Because they taped like two Thunders in a row or something. And then you would like how to get those storylines to make sense with Nitro just was yeah. all fucked up. Suffering and then also from the, success, man. And also the <laughs> workers didn't we get were... paid anymore for the new shows added. So that fucking sucks as well for the they workers. They didn't get paid like for working more matches. They just had no, they, their guarantee. Because WCW had guaranteed money. So they're like, oh. this is guaranteed. And then you do this. Yeah. Only some um, people had only some people had uh, contracts where you got paid extra per appearance. Mm -hmm. wow. Jeff Jarrett was one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, Jarrett came back to WCW after WWF, and because guys in WCW, since they had guaranteed money, like Tony was saying, yeah, they didn't want to fucking work house shows. No What's way. the point? They already get paid. Like, there's no point in them working yeah, house shows. Yeah. But Jarrett said, "Hey, I'll work the ho I'll work every single house show if you just pay me for the house shows that I work." And they said, "Okay, yeah, that sounds great." So Jarrett was. That's why Jarrett got so popular is because he was on every loop. He was on every house show. Yeah, loop. you'd always see him. Yeah, yeah. He was literally yeah, there for every I single show. That. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, of course, he did Jeff Jarrett versus Horse Hogan on Thunder, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he, they were, he did, was um, doing everything. Just, I know we're going a little bit off track here. Did either of you ever go to a WCW show? No, sadly, I did not. Tony? Yeah, I did. I went to oh, a you? house show. I saw Jeff well, Jarrett there for sure. Was Jeff Jarrett on? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, the, the only thing I remember, remember was Terry Funk. Terry Funk stink facing somebody. That's all I remember. What? That's sick. <laughs> Terry Funk used to pull his ass down all the time in WCW and do the stink face. Holy fuck. Do you remember, remember anything why. else from that house show? Uh, I threw an action figure at Canyon and he laughed. I don't know. That's about all I remember. <laughs> what fuck and hell? What well, action figure? I don't remember any yeah. of the matches. I don't actually know. It was probably a WCW one. I don't even know. <laughs> you throw a WWF Canyon. action figure at him? Fuck you, man. <laughs> no, because Canyon, because we were like, we were wherever the entrance ramp was, you know, like, uh, you know, like the boys peek through the curtain. Candy was doing that shit back then, peeking through the curtain. At Wait, the so he shows. wasn't even out there? You just threw it at the curtain where there's yeah, so much randomly standing? His head through watching the matches. We know? need all <laughs> the boys to stop peeking through the curtain. Thank you. I know. I would love, come on. I'm sure that's what Ted Turner was yelling. I hope all the guys <laughs> stop peeking through the curtain. <laughs> so yeah, I thought WCW guys. Imagine figure out this guy. <laughs> The WCW guys can stop peeking through the curtain and stop being injured behind the curtain too. WCW guys, stop it. <laughs> That'd be great. I agree. You know who wasn't peeking through the curtain? Jeff Jarrett. No <laughs> way. He was, he was working, brother. He, he was again. The, he was in the ring working. <laughs> uh, so this is the first ever Monday Nitro. So we, this is the first time we ever see the Monday Nitro intro with the guys Which on the wall awesome. and the exploding yeah. town. All timer. Shit it's all timer. Um, I never noticed in the first iteration that it was just Hogan, Vader, and Macho, and then Vader wasn't even on this fucking show. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. Fuck off. Um, well, Hogan we didn't want to work him. Fuck you, big brubba. <laughs> Do you think you think they were like, oh yeah, Vader versus Hogan first show? He said, no way. Probably big Bubba Rogers. <laughs> why was? Why, I mean, why would they have Vader in the intro if he wasn't going to be on the debut? I don't know. Well, before they got Nitro, like Vader was the champ. He was like the yeah. he was like the final boss of WCW. Really? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Nitro, I guess they wanted the Hogan thing to go for. I I be interested to see how they would have done without Hogan going into Nitro. Sure. Um obviously They must have known that uh Vader was about to go to WWE and get his ass beat by everybody. Whew, that's uh <laughs> <laughs> Were they yeah. they were still doing Saturday night though, right? So yeah, they was were. Vader on Saturday night. I can't remember if they announced because they went through the card of Saturday night later, but I don't remember. I don't think Vader's, Vader's on, on that night. card either. No. No, he, huh. he or at least they didn't announce him. Yeah. Um, uh, but what did you guys think of this Nitro intro? I love it. I think that I always thought the building thing was cool. I think they should have never. I think they should have just gotten more buildings. <laughs> just change the buildings. All timer. Fuck, greatest intro. Fuck doing whatever the greatest they intro went of to. all time. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I think this is super. I mean, like the branding they had here was like dope, like the fire with the steel on the nameplates and everything. Like, everything was just super well done. The big nitro thing on like, I don't know what you would call it, like the big girders or whatever. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they did. Uh, I mean, the branding for WCW, like pretty much the entire time it was around was pretty, pretty fucking sweet. Yeah, I mean, was. obviously, because WWF ended up lasting longer, um, a lot of mm-hmm. those pay-per-views and stuff, we remember a lot more. Um but like the branding wise, man, I mean, WCW's branding for these fucking shows is like really on point. Like it was Bash always at the catching. beach and yeah, yeah, like they had a bunch of like really cool shit that I think the uh, kind of gets they were passed good at, over. They were good at themes. Yeah, absolutely. If they had if they had a theme, they knew exactly what they wanted it to look like. Yeah, uh, like Even the Bash like of the, the Beach uh, set is crazy. It is. I'm thinking of the spring break nitros too, where they have the pool and stuff and the ring. Oh like yeah, those oh, are that's funny. legendary. That yeah, was that shit's awesome. Sweet. Yeah, God, I want to do that stuff they went, so bad. They literally doubled down on all the stuff. Like Halloween, okay, we're gonna have tombstones and a big fucking spooky guy, and it's gonna be yeah. awesome. You remember, Tony? That was the first like watch this we ever did. Yeah, yeah, was the it? cactus. Yeah, it was the Vader uh, cactus. Oh, wow. Yeah, match it. Uh, Halloween havoc. So we have a cold open here. It shows B-roll of the Mall of America where the event is being held. So many people, man. So many fucking people. I here. wonder what the uh, attendance number for this was. Seven. I mean, I don't know if we were able to find it. But... <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. I'll take, a, I'll take a look. Yeah, run through it. I'll, I'll try to. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was like the B-roll of the Mall of America, which, by the way, if you're going to debut an episode here, they, they said on... Uh, they said at the beginning here is like this is the only place I could hold this many people, which I mean, yeah. But the the uh, I mean, like I think this is the coolest fucking way to do a first show on a new program ever for wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it it looks so fucking crazy. Yeah, this looks incredible. They lit this place the fuck up. Like everybody just looks great here. Like you can see everything and everybody. You can see all the stores in the can, background. I was gonna say I really like that you can see all the like the the store names. All the neon signs are still lit up and all. It's yeah, awesome. this is really fucking cool. Um, Mongo McMichael's here. Um, what's he going by Mongo at this point? <laughs> Steve. He was, he, yes, he, he refers to himself as Mongo, but Steve. he's, Steve, he's introduced as Steve McMichael. This is his debut, right? In WCW? From what uh, I'm gathering? It might, it might be. be. It might be his on, it might be his commentary his debut. His commentary debut? For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's here and, uh, he is going to change the landscape of commentary as we see in the final shot before this episode of Nitro ends. <laughs> <laughs> things, things go crazy real quick. I can't find an attendance number on this, so I just assume it was like, it was like a lot. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I wonder if they counted everybody walking in the background too. Those counted as attendance too. Anyone that walked through the door of the Mall of America counted. <laughs> just a fixed number. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Bobby Heenan's also here. Um, and this is like, he interrupts a crazy commentary team like this is a this is the most insane lineup i've ever seen in my life would you like to see the list of the stores that i could <laughs> make out uh, yeah, from I would love to. the mall of america that, which i feel like this is like just a time capsule of fucking places for a lot of these okay so it's kids are us the great train store okay i don't <laughs> know if i heard of that one <laughs> <laughs> that's all timer Al- alamo flags stamper steakhouse there was some fucking jewelry mm. store Wicks and sticks. I'm guessing that's a candle store. Sure. Uh, Fat Tuesday, which I was like, whoa, Hell Fat yeah, Tuesday. I love fuck. that place. <laughs> Fat Tuesday. And service merchandise. <laughs> you could, dude, so, malls used to be so popular, you could just open shit up and like you'd make money. <laughs> Because people would just go there. Here's a train store. Fucking get in here. Dude, even the Mall of America is fucked up. There's like four Nike stores in the Mall of America. Have you ever been there? There's literally like... And they're all popping. They're all on three different floors and it's packed full of people. It's, it's insanity. <laughs> Gotta get my Nikes. Bobby Heenan interrupts. They're, they're trying to start off the show. Bobby Heenan interrupts and says, Welcome to WCW, Mr. Michaels. And he goes to shake Mongo's hand. And Bobby Heenan goes, Ah! And Mongo had like a fucking handshake zapper on his head. He said, don't <laughs> underestimate Mongo. <laughs> <had a> <laughs> what? Dork the clown buzzer. What the hell is going on yeah, here? Yeah, like, what the fuck are you yeah, doing, man? Yeah, always was. <laughs> sure. uh, Bobby Heenan was gassing up Mongo, and then Eric told him, he said, hey, why don't you say all that stuff you were telling me about him earlier? He said, hey, don't worry about that. Don't mind the basketball or whatever. You move on from that. <laughs> K-5, K- <five>, brother. <laughs> uh, the very first wrestler that we see on WCW Monday Nitro ever in the history of this entire program is Jushin Thunder Liger. That is so sick. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, yeah. I looked at this and I saw the commentary team and I saw Liger coming out and I this all just felt like DPW now. <laughs> this was like this just feels like DPW to me. This Dude, is even like the insane. matches like when you, we'll get into the match, but even the match itself felt like very different than WCW usually does. I don't know it, why. This whole episode felt different than like 
probably the nitros people are used to watching i actually recommend going like this episode honestly to me did not feel like it dragged at all this opening match holds up like a motherfucker oh yeah yeah the uh before they actually started nitro if you're interested in like obviously we talked about they go two hours here in in a, in a little bit like a, a year or so um yeah. but there's early nitros hour they're very wrestling focused um which obviously that Absolutely. changes later but these are very very wrestling focused the matches get a lot of time um, even the episodes before Nitro, if you go back and watch those two, very, very wrestling focused. Like you'll get Arn Anderson work in like, you know, 10, 12 minutes every week, like, which is like, yeah, definitely not. Don't worry. We, we'll talk about Arn later. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so we get Jushin Thunder Liger versus Flying Brian Pillman as the very first match. Liger and Pillman actually get time and they actually have they a pretty good match. Go fucking crazy here, man. I mean, one of the first thing Liger does is a rolling combo kick in the corner. <laughs> he just kills Pillman <laughs> with it. Fucking hits a moonsault. Pillman's doing tilt to head scissors and shit. He goes for like a second rope Rana and almost kind of breaks Holy his neck. <laughs> yeah. <was> scary. <laughs> I don't know who it was. Like <laughs> Bobby was... Oh, He definitely hit that like he usually does. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I started realizing that people going up and down an escalator to watch the show, which I thought is such a cool look. Like it felt very video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. think that's awesome. Like a Tony Hawk map. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Liger puts Pillman in the surfboard stretch. Looks fucking awesome. Uh, he hits a rolling senton off the apron. Liger is just like hitting on all cylinders here. Bischoff is putting uh, him over. Point... World renowned. Oh, this is vintage yeah. Juice and Thunder Liger. He brings this sort he of intensity. He's not making fun of anybody. Yeah, this, awesome. this is a very, <laughs> very like 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 we had mentioned before, wrestling centric. Like it was pretty sweet. Yeah, he didn't still drop yeah, the one liners. Sure. He said one good line here. He says he doesn't surf. He has someone do it for him. Which I thought that was a good line. <laughs> Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> he keeps going. He's like, you know, you ever go to the beach? You hit me like one of those. I do one of the surf things. I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> he does start wanting to kill you. I think it's super interesting that Bischoff, like, I, I, I have never, I don't think I've ever finished Controversy Creates Cash. I don't really remember too much from it. Um, I don't know if Bischoff ever talked about, like, um, his interest in what, I, I assume most of it was just what is WF doing and what, can we do to not like do with the that's opposite pretty of that. much what i yeah that's pretty much um, what he says on documentaries yeah. it's like what can we At do some that's point, different they go fucking crazy i don't know when that happens nwo style they go just crazy out of control i mean uh, bischoff got the nwo storyline from japan so like he obviously Absolutely, had yeah. some roots here at least he thought that this was interesting enough to bring over because mm -hmm, uh he does sure. that with the women's division and stuff too obviously something happens i guess uh nwo changed a lot of things popular nwo where he just dude. said fuck all yeah, this dude. shit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh liger hits a rana off the top for a 2.9 heenan is putting over this top rope rana like it's fucking the greatest thing he's ever seen he said he can't kick out of that he can't kick out of that i was like That's steiner awesome, i mean steiner man. was doing it uh as a finish at that time. Yeah. yeah. And Liger said, nah, two or whatever. Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the finish here is Pillman does a standing switch to Liger. Victory rolls him through and gets the three count. I don't know how long this match was, but it, it was. Sweet. Yeah. I thought this was really solid. And like there, I don't even know if there was a commercial. I don't, there was no commercial break this whole time. I don't think so. No, I think they just ran I think, through. Yeah. I think the commercial break was after. Yeah, it was. yeah, so that's uh, <laughs> there's a weird sting promo. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was he doing? I thought this was from like WCW <laughs> Thunder or something. That game, you know? I was oh, doing that's yeah, what I wrote yeah, down. Yeah. I said it feels like a fucking video select promo that he's trying to get me to fucking and the 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 screen. All right, so the match ends. Sweet fucking match. So they go to another screen. I don't even know how to describe this. The best way I can put it is it if. You can think of what a Nitro replay screen would look like. It kind of is like that, except Sting's video is not centered. Like, the center of it is the beginning of Sting's video, and then it goes to the end of the screen. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> happened here. I'm Sting, what? and I'm going to do the Scorpion <laughs> Death Drop, and the Scorpion <laughs> Hemi Lock, and I'm going to... Yeah! I feel better than you! Yeah! <laughs> 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 fucking wildberry pop tart sting <laughs> fucking going crazy awesome. no one can do deadlock on better than yours truly do the move <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna go to squanton <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome Hell yeah, yeah, fired exactly. up. uh now we get the pasta mania town hall this is crazy shit here man Dude, inside all right. the mall of america is 
Pasta Mania restaurant. That's the name of it. Eric Bischoff goes Pasta. to Hulk Hogan's restaurant, Pasta Mania. <laughs> That's the and Hogan just happens to be the there. The rumor too. is, I don't know what if this the is rumors? true or not. But the rumor through the rumors and the dirty's been talking about that. That's why they ran here in Mall America in the first place. Was Hogan was opening up Pasta Mania, so that's why oh, they ran. Really? Here. What an unbelievable dude! And just I would like to believe that's true, then. dude. I think I've seen this, this Pasta Mania thing. 500 times i've seen the hulk hogan picture with the pasta oh yeah 500 <laughs> times this is dude we've never talked about pasta mania on this show so i feel like we have to go over dude, this a little more i've seen this so much that it is normal to me now that this is not fucked up this here. is not normal <laughs> that hulk pasta mania hogan. image was shared on like you're the man now, dog, in like every other 90s website Absolutely. back in the day. No, yeah. It was I, on I, no everything. Clue. I've I had seen no clue this. what it was from at all at the time. I just saw Pasta Mania. I was like, I thought it was fake, I, thought, I think, when I first saw it. I was like, oh, that's funny. I know, I've seen those like Japanese Hulk Hogan commercials, you know, but I thought it was like one of those yeah. kind of things. But no, it's not. It's Pasta America. Mania. It is a Hulk Hogan pasta store. So I have here Hulk Hogan uh, from spaghetti. Russell Crap. The Hulk Hogan Pasta Mania <laughs> menu. It the says, Booty Man Alfredo. <laughs> <laughs> they have daily main event specials, the Hulkster's favorite international pastas from around the world. Uh, special menu for the little pasta maniacs. <laughs> Free beverage with person of any pasta platter. This is not normal. This is none of this, this is this normal. Menu. Look at this fucking menu. Swedish meatballs, beef stroganoff, <laughs> hogs power pasta. Hey, brother, let me get beef stroganoff, dude. <laughs> hey, dude, you want a fettuccine? <laughs> dude, how about for your little pasta maniac here, Hulkaroni and cheese? Oh, fuck what's, off. What's Hulkios? <laughs> no, they, talk, they talk about it. When he starts promoting this, he says some fucking name out of this. I don't know what he's talking about. He he he's a Hulkaroos. I'm jacked off my Hulkaroos and Hulkaroos, brother. What's Hulkaroos? What's oh, my little Hulkamaniacs. My pasta maniacs. <laughs> I bet you I bet you on everything that every single employee there has just had enough every single day. Like they go, hey, welcome to Pasta Man. What are you like? Hey dude. <laughs> Let me tell you what I want. Let me tell you, Jack. <laughs> There's no internet, so obviously like everyone's yeah, no, no one, one knows. knows that everyone does this. So like every single person that goes up. Dude, let me get fettuccine, <laughs> brother. Well, let me tell you something, brother. I'm gonna get the Swedish meatballs, dude. I can just see. You ever seen that picture of the Popeyes employee just like had enough? Fucking sitting outside. Yeah. That's every pasta mania employee every single day after hearing brother, dude, and Jack. <laughs> 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 I assume that everybody that works there Fuck. has to wear like the chef hat and the pasta mania uh, rip off shirt and they all have to, they gotta have the rip off shirt. Yeah, they gotta yeah, talk yeah. like Hogan every time. Oof. White clam <laughs> sauce, <know>. dude. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, there's Juice of Thunder Liger and Flying Brian Pillman. And next up we got Beef Stroganoff. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> Well, but back in the day, I will say this: Mall of America was like a thing that people wanted to go to like crazy. Like it was like uh, it's oh, like a yeah. landmark. Oh. Like people took like class yeah, school yeah, trips sure. to Mall of America around the Midwest. Dude, Viva La Bam had a sweet episode here, man. It's just yeah. Awesome. I was gonna say to put fun. that like that was like oh seven. To like explain that in the time frame is weird for people to think like a mall is the way like people wanted to go to this. No mall. malls were like actually cool. And then yeah, there would yeah. be like these crazy shops that you've never seen before in Mall of America. So Pasta Mania, yeah, brother. Like Pasta Mania. <laughs> So we're inside Pasta Mania here. Eric Bischoff is frantically trying to get an interview with Hulk Hogan, the WCW world champion, who is busy signing autographs here at Pasta Mania restaurant. Jimmy Hart's there as well, holding the WCW title upside down. <laughs> he always do. I know. <laughs> and Hogan looks at all the Pasta Maniacs and he says, who's the greatest wrestler in the world? <laughs> Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Macho Man. <Yelder. laughs> Fuck you, dude. Shawn Michaels. No pasta for you, brother. <laughs> Give me your side Get bread, dude. <laughs> Get this little asshole <laughs> maniac out of here. <laughs> no hookaroos for you, dude. No, no hookaroos for this little dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can go to Hulk Hell. <laughs> <laughs> The monster man. Fuck you, brother. <laughs> hey. 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 I'm gonna die. <laughs> Hulk, we're live. We're live, pal. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry about that, brother. Twenty percent discount to the little Hulkamaniac. <laughs> Dude, get him an extra beat ball. <laughs> beat ball on the house. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So Hogan, oh my God, he says tonight, Pasta Mania got all my Hulk maniacs running around. I made so much Hulkaroos and Hulk use. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's not on the menu, Hulk. Shut the fuck up. Who said that shit, you, brother? <laughs> what the hell is a Hulk of you? <laughs> Don't you worry about that, dude. <laughs> Take away his side breath. <laughs> Jack. Dude, he is just he is just yelling shit. He's not even saying words. No. Yeah, I'm gonna I feel bad for a big bubble brother. Brother, brother I'm putting the juice in <laughs> pasta bread, dude. When I'm done dragging him around the wall of America and all my fucking pasta maniacs are tearing their WCW shirts off, brother. I'm gonna get Big Bubba and throw some Hulkaroos up there and body slam him. Pasta what? maniacs, get the fuck up! <laughs> what the fuck is up, pasta maniacs? Get the fuck up, dude! <laughs> what point? He says he's got pasta mania running through his brain. <laughs> Holy fuck! Holy shit! <laughs> Dude, I felt, I felt like Michael Scott before he used the fettuccine Alfredo before the race. <laughs> got a carbo load, dude. H Hogan's eating fettuccine before he wrestles. He says, Big Bubba, you better tighten up that waistline. The Hulks are slim and trim. There's no and way you are slimming my pasta. <laughs> Carbos, dude. Hey, hey. <laughs> I don't think pasta works like that. Hey, fuck this kid, brother. Who said that? <laughs> Jimmy Hart, take this kid out back and kill him. I'm slim dude. and trim. pasta. <laughs> okay, dude. Jimmy Jack Hart, get out there. Go, Daddy. Well, <laughs> 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 Why don't you chicken marinara your ass on out of here, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly it was all Chef Boyardee canned pasta. No way, dude. <laughs> was it really? Holy shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that shit, bro? <laughs> You want to die? <laughs> Dude. I love that Hulk Hogan is very direct about this. <laughs> that little kid's asking no to subtlety. die, brother. No I'll kill that little kid, video. dude. <laughs> 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 Subtlety at all. Pasta Manio is stressed out and he's out of fucking dumb fit. Oh, so I was gonna tell you, uh, that's there was a. Uh, I got a picture I'm gonna show you guys on Discord. You guys can look it up online if you're oh, listening. But okay. uh, there was a uh, someone took What's the Pasta Mania sign and put it on the side of a random building that it was like a parking <laughs> lot in Minnesota and it, la Whoa. it lasted. It was, <laughs> it was there forever until the building got demolished. Who did that? <laughs> I will kill whoever did that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> they will ruin the day that they fucked with Hulkster and Pasta Mania, dude. <laughs> I will shoot you. <laughs> Bobby Heenan says, everyone's raving about Pasta Mania food, but it's the personalities I don't like. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what did you just say, brother? <laughs> no side pasta for Heenan, dude. <laughs> No bread, bread, no salad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so WCW US title, Ric Flair and Sting. <laughs> this is insane. Um, yeah, mid middle of the show, WCW United States Heavyweight title, <laughs> Ric Flair versus Sting after this Boston Mania bullshit. This is incredibly based. Uh, it's awesome. Sting is dressed as Mintberry Crunch from South Park. <laughs> <laughs> Mongo says before the match even starts, if you don't like real wrestling, you can go watch the WWF, you fucking bitch. Holy fuck, does he say that? He says Holy death shit. to the, he says, uh, what's he say? I haven't read that yet. Death to sports entertainment. 
Oh, what did he say? He said something about the new generation is is He's nothing dead. more than the, oh. than the few generation. He, he oh. basically just buried the WWF. He goes, if you don't like real wrestling, you can go watch. And Bischoff goes, don't, don't do it. Don't go oh, there. Shit. And he goes, I won't, I won't. And he just... Bobby oh, no, says, I was thinking of the Michael Wall Street thing. Oh, Michael Wall Street gets oh, into that's that right. later. Yeah, yeah. But yes. Lex Luger is Dude. here and he's in his best Seinfeld shirt. <laughs> he's in the brood. That actually, is the worst is shirt doing. to eat. Pasta, brother. <laughs> but I don't... <laughs> But I don't want to be a pirate. <laughs> well, that's too damn bad. <laughs> the worst shirt to eat pasta. <laughs> that's Petrucci. <laughs> Luger shows up. He's in a puffy white shirt. Very Seinfeld-esque. Or the brood Gangrel-esque. Mm -hmm. uh, Bischoff says, what is this? Get some security. <laughs> Get some security over here. <laughs> he and it says, what is he? What's he doing wrong? <laughs> Which is, I guess, fair. This is a public mall. People could be here. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Bischoff says, we got a major problem here. I want to know what he's doing here. And he even says, well, why don't you ask him? <laughs> Holy fair. shit. This is the sh iconic shot that you've seen a million times on every wrestling documentary ever. So the, what's the story here again? It's Luger's, Luger's not on a WWF like, contract, so he, right? Like he a handshake, fucking brother? fucked. Yeah, he fucked with WWE and was like, "Yeah, I'll sign a new contract." Oh, yeah, don't worry, I got you. I'll get you a new contract. Let's just wait. You know, I'll sign that's it. And so then he never, sick. And then he never did and went to Nitro that's and so said, "Fuck awesome. you, man." <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. Let me tell you something, Rear. Flair was making sure Sting looked like seven million kabillion dollars tonight. He he took a crazy amount of bumps for Sting here, like astronomical amount of bumps here, like. Sting is doing pairs of leapfrogs and then power slamming Flair. Flair gets up and he takes another power slam. Holy, f like back to back. And that's not even like, there's like four more coming later too. All on his hip, by the way. He oh, lands yes. on his hip yes, every yes. Sting, <laughs> Sting legitimately crazy. pretty much stood in the center of the ring and Flair worked around him. No joke. That, you're yeah, right. Yeah. He just, he just fed in for fed genie. He fed in for <laughs> what, what, brother? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> How better would be if Luger showed up eating fed a genie? <laughs> sorry, I can't. Pasta Mania is, is running wild right now, brother. Luger's I'm sorry. Luger's in the some Hulk That's where the security was. That's how he even got in. Use. Where's the damn security? <laughs> He's pretty good. They're eating pasta. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Dude, Sting's like yelling woo here is so loud by the way like crazy the crowd yeah. pops huge for it too it threw me off here because i feel like this is a only wcw thing at, i mean maybe not because i guess wwf did that too but i feel like i'm so at least now used to not seeing uh, a camera guy on hard cam to seeing one standing on the apron on the mm. hard cam side was like crazy yeah. i used to love that they used to have a box that they put beside the ring and have the guy stand right. on it did WWF have that, or was that just WCW? WCW. I feel like WWF never, never did that. <clears throat> uh, obviously, yeah, I'm sure they so did either. it at least once. You I'm guys sure, can fuck yeah, off. Yeah, I'm sure you somebody on the apron. was. Oh, was <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, I was listening to uh, the Jeff Jarrett pod the other day, and uh, they talked. Yes. Do you remember mm -hmm. uh, back when they did lockdown, like the first time, where they were like, oh, look at all the cages? Um, yeah, 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 they had like the guys in the ring, like they would like film the cage match in the ring. That's right, yeah, yeah. And TN or sorry, TNA, AW started doing that too. At least with that all out, they did that where they had the space. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Jared the said the uh, guy. they actually didn't like that the way that that came out. Um, really, mostly because I think it gotten got in the way of the guys working. Um, yeah, and they're like, yeah, we just you know. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I feel like it always looks so much better though. Like I kind of hated when they shot through the holes that they would make in the cage. I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah, looking. no, I mean that's what they went to eventually. Um, and of course, yeah. you know, six sides of steel. He was like, you know, we we all. I guess I never even thought of it like that. But they said we used to paint the cages black because when you watch it on video, having shining metal show for a super long time is very annoying. Not only for the people viewing at home, but for the people watching in the crowd. Yeah. Um, okay. which I always just thought was like an aesthetic thing, but I guess that makes sense too. That makes, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's, it is pretty interesting. Um, so back to the match here. Uh, so Luger is, is gone at this point. He didn't still ask him if Luger was looking at Sting or was looking at Flair. He says there's a lot of animosity there. Uh, Flair is eye poking Sting. <laughs> it's chopping him in the corner. <laughs> uh, Flair hits a crossbody on Sting and they go both over the top rope. This is, uh, man, this is like a master class. This is, uh. It's this good. is a this is like a '90s masterclass. Like Sting, literally, he's just there for the crowd. Yeah, and Flair, yeah. Flair yeah. gives him every single opportunity 
to get that pop. And like, this is like, just, you know, Flair gets his ass kicked, gets his ass kicked, gets his ass kicked. Oh, he comes back at him, pokes him in the eyes. That's ass so kick, sick, ass kick, yeah. <laughs> hits him in the shin. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and he is bumping. The, like, he, like you said earlier, he is yeah. going nuts. And the crowd's biting uh, on all of it, too. Like, they're there for everything. I mean, I don't know how much of this was a wrestling crowd. They were obviously like, you know, I thought it was, everyone probably knew Sting and Flair, so they just showed him. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it was fucking <clears throat> cool. So Flair runs at Sting, hits a cross body on him, and they both go over the top rope. I was like, holy fuck, I don't remember Flair doing shit like that. I don't that think awesome. I've ever seen Flair do that, really. Speaking of speaking of stuff that he probably shouldn't be doing, fucking Tony, Sting press slams Flair uh, through the ropes back into the ring. I swore he was going to press slam him on the floor. Because I Flair, like James said, Flair was doing a lot. To fucking get Sting over here, so I thought, job, <laughs> press me to the guardrail. <laughs> fucking... He did everything <laughs> that he possibly hell? could, man. Like this was, yeah. wow. I and mean, this is he, like how uh, Flair wrestled. Flair's on the top. They do the Flair bump, and I feel like Flair is floating through the air for like five seconds on this bump here. When he and takes he gets... the turnbuckle, yes, 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 yes. God, yeah, that's beautiful. That fucking then... turnbuckle take is like because I think Charlotte does it too, but it's like if you put oh, them sorry, side not by that side. One. I mean, um, the when Flair's up top and Sting sh- like uh, deadly drivers him off the top, like pulls. Him oh, off. okay. I thought you were talking yeah. about the turnbuckle take. No, the the yes, but the walk. Yes, I know what you're talking about. That one is also fucking sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> which is I feel like that's not a very Flair thing. I don't know how that got into his repertoire, but I it's I guess it is a Flair thing because he does it, but it just it seems out of place sometimes. Um, you got to yeah, do the yeah. you got to take the buckle, boom, boom, over Fargo strut. Go line. back over, yeah. go to the top, <laughs> miss. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that was the, that was yeah. always the yeah, flair the whole thing. thing. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that was that's awesome. Fun. It is cool. Um, another press slam by Sting. <laughs> he <laughs> had to do hell. at least like eight or nine in this match, right? It's, it's. I mean, I, at least five. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I count yeah. four or five, but there's a lot. There might be. It's more like later you got. Then. It's like you started creating a move set for your character and got lazy, and you're just like gorilla press yeah. slam one, gorilla press slam two, <laughs> yeah. three, four, five, six. <laughs> Arn Anderson comes out. And a Nike windbreaker here. He must have went to one of the three Nike shops. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, he's smacked out. Do not fuck with this guy. Arn Anderson looks. I don't. I don't know how old Arn is here. I think Hogan on the show, by the way, is forty two. Just the yeah. I think Arn's like twenty seven or forty five. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be the same for today, too. Uh, yeah, also true. Sting jumps off the top rope and misses a dive and dies. Flair hits a stalling suplex on Sting, which Sting no-sells and gets up and just fucking Flair starts bumping and feeding for him. Uh, <laughs> if this was anyone other than Sting, it would make no sense, but I watched it and I go, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sting does the 10 punches on Flair in the corner. I th- thought it was great that the referee got on the second rope with them to try to get Sting to stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's against the rules, hey. Get out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here. This is weird. Flair bumps Sting off the top, then comes down off the top rope himself just to pick Sting up to Irish whip him, <laughs> and then they start chain wrestling. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I really, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I honestly think most of this match was just like called on the spot, and they were Probably, just kind of yeah. figuring it out. Maybe Arn was supposed to do something sooner, and they are like, oh, fuck it. Uh, yeah, Sting, whatever. T- slot me yeah. up. <laughs> Sting bridges out of a pin and backslides Flair for a two. Uh, he's talking shit to Arn. Then Flair chop blocks him. Uh, Sling gets put in the figure four. He's cheating by holding the ropes. The referee counts to five, stops the count. Flair is still holding on. The ref starts counting the five again. Arn gets in the ring to break it up. And then the ref calls for the bell. I'm not really sure who won still. <laughs> yeah, I sure. actually have no clue. I guess... <laughs> I, was it a DQ? He grabbed Flair's just... leg to take so, him off the figure four. That but, means Flair should have won. So I, th- but if the ref was counting Flair in the rope was way more than five count, ten yeah. count. Yeah, I may he. It, I think he called the match as he grabbed the rope for the five. I, so right. he was D. He was DQ. I think Arn was supposed to get in sooner. Is really what happened here because <laughs> he did it twice. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, ref calls the bell. Uh, Arn and Flair are bowing up to one another, and Flair just punches him in the face. <laughs> just fucking... Arn goes nuts on him, dude. And Arn flips the fuck out, and they brawl outside. Arn is whooping his ass. Security has to break it up. This is a crazy scene here. I thought I figured they were both going to stomp out Sting. I just always assumed they horsemen got back together every time. Yeah, I think they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, once again, just like uh, the psycho- the psychology back in the '90s was like uh, was pre- always just really interesting. Like, yeah, um, you know, I don't even know at this point in his career if like Flair even had to like call anything. Like, he just knew. Like, he- it's like he did all the same shit every match, but it was all- always in the right spot, no matter what. Which is yeah. like, 
I don't know, man. Like that's kind of that. You just had to be so like next level thinking to be like one step ahead. I know it seems like, like it seems basic, but it's not like he's just doing the same shit over and over and over and over again. Yeah, but it's like yeah, yeah. You gotta know he knows exactly when to do it. Like yeah. the crowd popped huge for him, like getting back in the ring, and then Sting starts walking at him, and then like. He goes to lock out with him and then he backs up and he goes on the ground. He's like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. And then Sting gets up on him and they're going crazy. It's like, it's yeah, awesome stuff, crazy. man. So we're, wa- we're looking at Arn, who's being held back by security to stop him from whooping Flair's ass. We cut back to ringside. Scott Norton in a cutoff shirt walks up, screaming at Eric Bischoff and everybody on commentary. He says, I signed the contract. I need an opponent. I'm like, what is fucking happening? I'm I didn't realize. I'm Shane I mean, Mercer, and I need a match right dude, now. I, I didn't recognize him at first. I was like, who the fuck is this dude? He looks uh, just like Shane Mercer. This is crazy he looking, actually. He dyes his hair, I think, in either the next year or two. Yeah, they are. He's just screaming at them. Uh, and then Mongo steps up. He says, what the fuck is your problem, bro? Scott Norton says, I'll fucking fight you, man. You want this? Mongo says, you want this? <laughs> That's awesome. And then all of a sudden, the fucking macho man shows up. <laughs> hey, fuck you, what Scott Norton. <laughs> Macho Man turns on around. He says, you want some of me, brother? <laughs> I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> Dude, you, that was sick. He says, you want a reputation? I don't know what that means. How about yeah, the heard. Macho Man Randy Savage? Is that good enough for you? Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> he and did Norton the gimmick. Says, yeah, In did. his face. <laughs> He's shooting on him. Dig it. <laughs> that was uh, sick. Nor- Norton says, what are you waiting for? And Macho says, I'm not waiting for nothing. Let's do it right now. The crowd is losing their fucking mind. Comment- and Eric Bishop's like, no, we can't fucking do this. Macho gets in the ring. He's hitting his corner pose, swirling his fucking finger Crazy. around. Crazy. Bischoff's yelling at Norton. He says, if you step foot in that ring, you will never wrestle in WCW. This is like a crazy cool scene. I loved how this looked. It looked very chaotic. Uh, and you could hear everything from everybody. I don't know how yeah. they had this mic'd. Oh, I said they should have done the match here. I don't know why. They, I like, was actually uh, excited for it, but I guess that's the whole point. <laughs> right? No, yeah, I, I understand <laughs> yeah. that. But damn, that would have been sweet if they would have yeah, just I done a random match. Him. At least brawl a little. Yeah, fucking powerbomb macho on his head. Nah, no way. They can't touch, man. <laughs> bro. Scott Norton's touches the macho man. He's going to throw him into the crowd. He no, can't wrestle true. in WCW if he does that. <laughs> So, that was real bitch. quick and stirring too. You didn't even think yeah. twice about it. So I really don't care if you're here or not. Fuck you, man. <laughs> and Bischoff Did somebody say fuck, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Bischoff immediately goes from threatening Scott Norton's job to turns into the camera and he says, "Let's look at Sabu." What? <laughs> yeah, that fuck. was crazy. I like. I, I don't know why I do. Sabu pre-tape on the first Nitro is not something I'd expect. No, the hell, that sounds cursed. What the fuck? I for some reason I didn't think Sabu was there for another year. I thought he came in in '96 as well, but he's already here doing That's, Sabu. He's already had multiple magics. They have footage of him too. Yeah, they have footage of him working. That's crazy. It's like a it's a Sabu hype video, and the video looks like you know, like on like old computers when your window would freeze and you would just drag the window around, like, so, and like was, solitaire when you win. Yes, yes, yeah. that's what it look like here. Uh, and yeah, so Sabu hype video on the first Nitro. That's fucking. Wow. How long does Sabu even last in WCW? Uh, he, he lasts through. I think he's only there for a little bit in '95, right? Because he's see. at ECW uh, November a- to remember '95. I think he's only there in 95, actually. Because he he's, he's out in November. So when was this taped? He debuts in September of 95 on Nitro. Wait, what? September. Yeah, this is it. September. Yeah, this one. Wait, oh, what next footage week. did they use then? Uh, he was doing dark stuff before then, I think. Well, okay, he, ha- wor- he, okay. he had to have worked. Like Saturday you know. night or something. Well, this says Sabu made his WC deb- debut on September 11th, 95 on Nitro against Alex Wright. So he debuts the week after. Well, that might so be his Nitro debut. This is, I mean, Wikipedia just says straight up WCW debut. Oh wow! Let me look. Yeah. Up, let me look up Sabu's WCW uh, record. What do you got going on here? And then uh, could his be last Japanese week. footage. I don't know. Maybe Tony's uh, right was, that it was dark matches. He was in WCW 1993. Did a house show against Mad Max Anthony. Uh, uh, I remember that one. Yeah, that's. And then he did. Uh, he beat the shark. You know, the shark beat him on in '95 at a taping. Not the shark. Hit, and then his, Sabu uh, defeats question mark, question mark, question mark. And then he fought Canyon. Guy. And then and he threw a figure out of him. That's a TV taping. What? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, question I mark. <laughs> I don't know. And then, uh, yeah, of course, he did the Alex Wright debut. His last match in WCW was against Disco Inferno, which he won. <laughs> and then he goes to Big Japan in March of 96. That's so sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he returned to ECW on the 
18th at November to remember 95. So he's, yeah, he's not, he's there, what, like three months? I wonder what happened. Yeah, I, I, but I, I assume I the WCW was money was better than the ECW money. He was probably a crazy bastard that only wanted to do what he wanted and wanted to kill people with tables and shit. And they said, hey, man, no. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get Mean Gene uh, congratulating Mike Hill <laughs> Mike. for winning <laughs> Mike a Hawk. Harley Davidson sweepstakes. <laughs> mean Gene is in the ring here with glasses. And he starts it off by saying, Ah, oh, to think I could have bought 10 acres of land here for $17,000 in 1953. Of course, I was only eight years old at the time, so who knows? Anyway, I'd like to congratulate you the winner. About? <laughs> I don't know. What, what are you talking about? Fuck? I want to congratulate the winner of the Harley Davidson sweepstakes, Mike Hunt in Alabama. And 1995 Harley Davidson is on the way to you. I Great. always love that Mean Gene, like, just kind of used WCW for his own little schemes. The fucking hotline made like disgusting yeah, money, like, right? Yeah, I feel like that had nothing to do. Yeah, I feel like WCW made no money off that. It was just a <laughs> mean gene. I don't gene think so. Yeah, no, I don't think they did. Yeah, he did a bunch of sweepstakes and mean gene just making money on the side, <laughs> using television to use. Yeah, yeah. This was a little like weird place, but it is too like so random. Why do they have him in the ring for that? Like I don't know. A little scheme action. Uh, <laughs> they do. They show WCW Saturday Night. They advertise Johnny B. Bad versus Dirty. Nasty, <laughs> sloppy, Dick <laughs> Slater. Dick <laughs> Slater. <laughs> Double main event. Johnny B. Bad versus Dirty Dick Slater. And Sting and... it Was it Sting and uh, Macho? Yeah, yes, Sting, and Sting, Sting versus and Macho. Macho Man. No, I thought I thought they said Sting and Macho versus the Blue Bloods. Is that not they what they were. said? That was the match, yes. Yeah, oh, I thought it was Sting versus Bloods. Macho. I was like, that's well, that, a crazy Saturday Night match. Well, that makes a lot of sense, James, because they only showed Sting and Macho on the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they didn't show the Blue Blood. Because it would have tricked me. I'd be like, holy fuck, Sting versus Macho Man <laughs> yeah, on Saturday I guess you're Night. Right. That was smart. Maybe the Blue Bloods didn't have pictures. You know, they just didn't. They, didn't... they just didn't get pictures that day. They they, they got asked yeah, to take pictures. That's they just didn't true. do it. They didn't want to use yeah. the vacant renders. You know, yeah, so so yeah. we have those for you. Don't worry That's about tough. that. Yeah, yeah, we got that. Uh, there's also a Fall Brawl War Games update on that show. Saturday Night 605. Yeah, that's, uh, I love that that logo. Like that Fall Brawl logo. With the grenade? Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> that is fucking sick. Uh, we go to a pre-tape. Uh, Bruce Campbell from The Evil Dead is here. <laughs> <laughs> well, how I will say, how dare you ignore what happened just before this. Maybe you just didn't catch it. But they do a wide shot of the ring. And they show a mascot at ringside hyping up the crowd. Yes, of course, that's... Wildcat Willie, the WCW mascot. Do you remember of Wildcat course. Willie? No, not really. Yeah. Never. This is the first right. I've ever heard of it, actually. They didn't even Wild like say anything or did just I'm not even this is the he first time I've ever heard of Wildcat Willie. He was like legit just a hype guy. Uh Willie's like so oh, he actually He grows up to be Jeremy Borash. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How about that? <laughs> uh IRS is here in WCW now. Yes. Um, and his name is Michael Wall Street. Do you think this was this looked this way on TV where you could see the fucking no, background on no, this one? <laughs> yeah, you can see the that. arena. They do yeah. a lot of that stuff in like the old uh, tapings. You can see uh, a lot of it's like yeah, that it's just, where they have you see like, the promo the and then you see the, the shot of the arena behind it. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, four three you're magic baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Michael Wall God, Street says dude. it is about power and money, and in a place where the best wrestlers in the world are, like Hulk Hogan, Sting, Vader. You've added Bubba. Mr. Wall Street. <laughs> I'm Dude. sure. He says, I'm sure the IRS is going to be watching me real close, but that's fine. Huh? <laughs> what? Why? This is crazy to me. He's dressed up like Ted DiBiase. Yeah. But what the fuck? He says, as you go down the road in WCW, you will know that Michael Wall Street is a real player. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where he talks about the, the new generation here. Though, yeah, what does well. he say? He says, people in the past have been talking about the new generation. Well, the new generation is nothing more than a few generation. <laughs> it's all about the power. It's about the money. Okay. <laughs> when you're standing next to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know you feel the power. <laughs> he eventually joins the NWO. <laughs> yeah, classic. Of course, of course he does. Uh, and of course, that sets us up for the main event of the evening. Big Bubba Rogers <laughs> versus Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah, it's about that for, time. For the world title. Big Hulk Hogan Bubba. is carbo loaded and ready to fucking fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's rude, dude. <laughs> Big Bubba's out here in suspenders, and that's awesome. They introduced him from Cobb County, Georgia, and Mongo asks, where's this guy from? 
Could be from he anywhere. Goes, what part, he goes, what part of the sticks is this guy from? And you they just know so on commentary. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> you, go. man. Dude, uh, who said it on commentary at the beginning here? He says, Hulk Hogan had his pasta. This could go on all night long. It was probably Heenan. <laughs> Had his pasta <laughs> going all night long. What's that That's mean? Big. <laughs> What'd you say, Heenan brother? <laughs> I love that Hulk Hogan has like he can hear the commentary. He has like a, a ear mic in too. Well, he's like up to to the restaurant. Of he's course. talking the commentary. Put me over now, brother. <laughs> Talk about the feta cheese. He also he also has direct feed to all the orders that come in too for the pasta <laughs> in the restaurant. Let me take your order, dude. Look at it, number you one. Think- <laughs> You think of the launch that Hogan was taking the orders? Yes, 100%. <laughs> they walk up, yeah, let me get a, a Hulk pasta. That's not enough, dude. <laughs> Welcome to the good brother. Minimum $10 order. Do you want to add a meatball, brother? <laughs> Welcome to the good brother. <laughs> Welcome to good brother. <laughs> Welcome to good brother, dude. Home of the good, the brother. good brother, dude. <laughs> Jack. Let me take your order, brother. <laughs> so Jimmy Hart comes out with Hogan. Jimmy Hart's in a full American outfit. He is out of control, this fucking guy, man. Front um, row signs. Hogan sucks. Hogan is a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> make what, sure dude? they don't make it in. <laughs> make them starve to death. Dude. No pasta, dude. <laughs> Like no soup for you. This <laughs> no, no pasta for you. For you. Uh, <laughs> fucking big Bubba has his shirt unbuttoned here, sexy style. This is crazy for hell? a man. Of better, man. Well, every big Bubba match, he's got his shirt unbuttoned. That's this guy's awesome, amazing. man. I love I love that no matter guy. what gimmick, what character, he's always got the unbuttons. He said, "I'm yeah, sexy." Exactly. He said, "I'm working forever tonight. in a day." Yeah. Uh, Hogan <laughs> shoulder tackles Bubba, and Bubba like dies and falls into the second rope. I don't know if he was selling or if he just the that power was of beast Pasta mode Mania. right there, bro. <laughs> that was Pasta Mania, dude. Uh, the carbs Hogan. got him, brother. <laughs> dude, at one point, fucking Hogan is on top of Big Bubba on the ground, punching him in the head. The referee grabs him by his hair and pulls him off. The uh, there's not a lot of that left, dude. Stop. <laughs> Let go of my angel hairs. <laughs> Fuck off, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he just breaks. Fuck! Stop! <laughs> hey, dude! Bro, please bro. stop messing with me. Leave bro, me alone, st- brother! Stop! <laughs> Leave brother. me alone! <laughs> Leave me alone, dude! <laughs> uh, Bubba goes to the floor uh, and strips Jimmy Hart of his shirt, and then goes to punch him in the face. But Hogan catches him and punches him in the head, and then Hogan is in the ring choking. Or something. He's trying to fucking suffocate Big Bubba with Jimmy Hart's jacket as Jimmy Hart is distracting the referee on the apron by hanging himself with his tie. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> they were on. not making this. You know, <laughs> looking back on it, you know, we're all, I guess maybe because history told us, we were like, oh man, that heel turn. Who could have expected? Yeah. Poking his poking eyes and choking with flags and <laughs> face washing. That's all here. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Yeah. He opened up Pasta Mania. Like, That's come on, he, man. He like. Ra- <laughs> he like. <laughs> He like rubs his boot on Bubba's face on the ground too after dropping some elbows, right? Doesn't he do he two? He hits and the then fucking like, boot, drops yeah. two elbows, stops, looks at the crowd, and then face washes him with yeah. his boot. Yeah, that was so. That's weird. a heel fucking boot. No way. <laughs> what is heel, dude? <laughs> yeah, I hit That's my a- heel, brother. <laughs> Uh, Bubba hits the Bubba Man Slam for two. <laughs> the Big Bub Your Slam? <laughs> Bubba Man Slam? I don't know. Uh, uh, Hogan yeah. kicks out, of course. <laughs> yeah, fuck that move. <laughs> I'm carbo-loaded, dude. Hogan starts okay. posting up. <laughs> Carbon up. Burning carbs, dude. <laughs> he hits the big boot and the leg drop, and he wins, and the crowd loses their fucking mind, man. They are super into it, no matter what Hogan does. Hogan could have took a dump on him pasta style and still hit the leg drop yeah. and got a pop. Uh, Hogan yeah. beat him, man. It, it, I don't know. I guess the the Wildcat mascot was out there earlier and said, if Hogan wins tonight, 20% off at a teeny. <laughs> No way, dude. Who fucking said that, brother? (laughs) I'm going to roast that fucking cat. I'm going to kill this dude, brother. (laughs) I wonder why Pasta Mania didn't last long. Weird. (laughs) Dude, Hogan doesn't understand this. 
Hogan not a starts great... posing, by the way. He starts posing and he tells Bubba to kiss his ass, full on <laughs> ass slap. What is fucking going uh, on here? And uh, then he was a big ass even, slapping guy back in the I, day. You're, I guess you're right. And then even crazier, Kevin Sullivan, Kamala, and the Zodiac all run out to get <laughs> Hogan's shark. ass. And Shark, you're right. The shark was here. <laughs> they all come out to whoop Hogan's ass. And then Lex Luger makes a save in his puffiest shirt and tightest jeans to possible. Oh. <laughs> so they're clearing house Hogan and his brother Lex Luger. Uh, Can Macho you name and... the four guys that came out here? Just so everybody understands one more time what just happened. Hogan beats Big Bubby Rogers yes. with Jimmy Hart ringside. And who comes out again? It is, of course, the Dungeon of Doom of Kevin Sullivan, Kamala the Ugandan Giant, the Zodiac, and the Shark. <laughs> Who's the Zodiac, Johnny, for people that might know? The Zodiac, uh, some of you may know him as the Booty Man, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> this, he is wearing the Booty Man attire, he is. but with white face paint Zodiac on. Zodiac face paint, <laughs> who is also known as Brutus the Brother Beefcake. <laughs> <laughs> brother. <laughs> so they all come out to Wolf Hogan's ass. Luger makes a save in puffy shirt and tight jeans. Macho and Sting come in to break up Hogan and Luger arguing after they cleared the ring. Oh, yeah, they, they do a sweet shot, which I thought was going to go. Where they go back to back and then they raise fists at each other like they're going to beat each other. Who are you? <laughs> 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 what are you doing here? That's not cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hogan mouths. That's not cold. <laughs> Hogan says, Why don't you go back where you came from? <laughs> and then Bishop said, Whoa, he said that shit. That's crazy. And then they put the current current shot of like Sting, Hogan, Luger, and Macho Man in the ring in like a replay screen and then it says coming up more Nitro. I, was like, I thought that was the end of the show. It was not. The, the commercial timing here is crazy. I guess they didn't want to do it during matches. I guess, yeah. Which, Which is good. I'll take that. Hell um, yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Uh, obviously that changes later on. They do a War Games commercial here which is awesome, by the way. War Games is a fucking... War Games was created because they had fucking killed the the cage match i don't yeah, know if you yeah. ever knew that story but they had fucking killed the cage match they did it so often how do we do a cage match and make it draw again yeah. war game that's awesome man <laughs> i mean smart and then we come back from commercial mean gene is in the ring to interview everybody he says i don't know what's going on hogan and hogan it just doesn't care he says he looks at luger and says what are you doing here luger and luger says i'm here for one reason people say you're the number one wrestler today you wear that title around your waist that makes you the only world champion, and I'm here to take that belt. And Hogan says, well, let me tell you something. Luger says, stop, I'm not done. <laughs> let me <laughs> finish. Shut, Shut up. up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> he says, I've Brother, been down the same no road. there is no garlic and oil sauce for you. <laughs> <laughs> Not for you, dude. <laughs> Jimmy, go Don't tell you beef stroking off your ass on out of here. <laughs> beef stroking his penis, dude. <laughs> Oh shit! I know you come from the land of pasta mexicana, but around your brother, turkey tetrazzini. <laughs> oh this is one big pasta mini commercial. <laughs> Luca says, "I'm going to the same road as you." <laughs> He said, I've beaten the same people you've beaten. I'm sick of playing with kids. I'm here to get along with the big boys. And that what? You. what the what? hell? That's kind of sus. <laughs> what, brother? <laughs> what are you doing to my kids? <laughs> brother. <laughs> the Hokios says, and Pasta Maniacs. Don't do that, dude. <laughs> you better Don't stop. play with the big boys, brother. Hogan says, you see this, brother? This is the WCW championship. I'm the champion. You playing games, and I don't know when you started and how long you've been here, brother. But when you came to WCW and you get Hulk Hogan's face, brother, there's thousands of pasta maniacs that'll stand behind me. And as great as you may be, dude, you don't have to wait till next. This is crazy. You don't have to wait till next week. Just stick that stinky palm of yours out and, and shake my hand. And I will defend the title against you next week. You stick that <laughs> stinky <laughs> palm out, brother. You don't have to wait till next week. And I'll defend this against you next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the match here right now next week. <laughs> you stinky bitch. <laughs> you stick that <laughs> stink. Keep palm out, brother. <laughs> what are you doing to kids? 
<laughs> you freak. don't cut the shot, brother. What are you doing to the kids? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we get that match next week, of course. They shake heads, the sticky heads. They shake and then Hogan them. shoves him. Hogan's he an asshole, him man. Yeah. Um, and then the and show it... ends with Bischoff, Heenan, and Mongo at ringside <laughs> doing commentary. Mongo is now holding Pepe the dog. Let's in a, go! <laughs> in a Satan outfit. <laughs> <laughs> this is so base. Pepe the dog, little Satan, and Mongo tells Pepe that... Pepe cannot be a fan of the Dungeon of Doom anymore. <laughs> yeah, Pepe said, oh, that's okay. why he's dressed up. That's why he's, yeah, dressed he's up. a this part of the Dungeon, Dungeon of Doom. Doom. Oh, and he okay. says, you have to take this outfit off. And Eric Bischoff says, we're out of time. We got to go. We'll see you next week. <laughs> this is the best. I love that he dressed Pepe up differently like every week. That was he so He did it sick. forever, too. Yeah, that was awesome. This is a... Uh, this show is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay so much money to see John Taffer go to Pasta Mania, man. <laughs> you want, you got something to say? You can say it to me. <laughs> or Shut it down. down. <laughs> fuck you, dude. No Don't way. you ever. Hey, fuck you, man. No way. You get out. You get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I'm out. You get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> Free beverages for everybody, dude. Let him in here. <laughs> Pasta platter, shell. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, fuck. You take your all gritty and cheese and you go to hell and you die. 